How many investors in the room that want to admit it? Um, <laughs> how many um, service providers that help all of us burgeoning entrepreneurs out in the room? Woo, look at that. How many blossoming entrepreneurs in the room? Okay. Just, I, that's my unofficial poll. I just wanted, and it was a third, a third, a third, almost. Um, that kind of helps me a little bit with where I go with this, because I'm not totally prepared on where I'm going with this. But um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about um, myself and where we started. I'll try not to get into too much of you should do this and you should do that, because first of all, I don't know that I'm qualified. I'm a first time entrepreneur. Um, I was in the business section for corporate America for almost 20 years. Um, so I don't know that I'm really qualified to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. I just know that I can tell you how much we screwed up and where we are now. So um, we'll start there. Uh, my story, I'm a native Oregonian. Um, I went to school at the University of Oregon. I was on the track team uh, competing in pole vault and decathlon there. Uh, I got into the industry of footwear apparel and stuff like that because Nike was giving us our shoes to compete in. And as a pole vaulter, they were giving us like sprinter spikes and they didn't work. Um, so we kind of, my roommate and I at the time said, hey, let's fi fix these shoes. So we found somebody who did diabetic footwear and uh, she could cobble and figure out how to fix shoes. So we told her what we, we wanted her to do and she went and did it. Um, and when she did that, uh, we tested them and they worked. And then we went back to the Nike guy and said, hey, your shoes don't work. This is what we did to fix them. And he said, great, take him to this guy in this lab and, uh, in Eugene, and he will uh, help you kind of make them so you can actually wear them more than once, because uh, they fell apart. Uh, so yeah, that was a downside to our design. Um, <laughs> so then uh, I took it to this lab, and it was this old cadre guy, and he's like, what do you want? And I told him what I wanted, and he, he said, OK, well, I'll see if I can help you out here. Um, and I, I started working with him on developing this thing. And unbeknownst to me at the time, it was Bill Bowerman, who was the co-founder of Nike. Um, and, but it was a really kind of a really good introduction into that world because before then, um, my higher education had taught me that when you were an athlete and you or something like that, you just left that world and went to work. And the people that worked at Nike, Adidas, Reebok, and Puma, I wasn't really sure what they did except gave athletes contracts. So I was like, I don't know the rest of that business. Um, and what it did is it kind of gave me a view into that world. Um, and after attempting to qualify for the Olympic trials and, uh, and uh, pulling my hamstring about a month before the Olympic trials and said, OK, I got to get a job. Um, I went to Nike and Adidas, had interviews with them both on the same day, got job offers from both of them. And Nike was uh, an amazing complex of seven buildings and seven floors and 300 cubicles on each floor. And I was 25 and I said, how does anybody know if you show up for work or not? Um, <laughs> I didn't feel like I was going to be able to make an impact and make a difference. And that was really, when you're young and you're energetic, you're like, oh, I want to, you know, I'm going to save the world. I'm going to help the world and I, I want to be able to make an impact. And so, I went to Adidas and it, we just launched over here and opened with like 25 people over on uh, Northeast Portland. And uh, you know, there was no walls and it was a big room and the accounting guy was screaming over to the uh, promotionals guy about signing some guy and there was somebody, a product person saying, hey, how do we make the shoe? And I was like, wow, there's like 25 people in here that are yelling at each other and I can make a difference. Um, <laughs> So I, I started my career there, and it was, it was a great run, and I did a lot of great things uh, with that company. And, and one of the really interesting pieces of that work was that I ended up in the innovations lab working on advanced concepts and, and innovations. Um, fast forward, so we started a company, called it Loopedworks, said, OK, we're going to kind of go out, and this is where we started to screw up. We, the first thing we did is we set it up and we said, oh, you know, we're international business guys. We've done business all over the world. Um, this makes total sense. Let's bring in another partner who has some money. Um, and he's going to be based in Carlsbad, California. We're going to be in, uh, in Portland, Oregon. And our distribution center, because he already has this deal set up, is going to be in Kentucky. Makes total sense for a startup, right? And so there was these challenges around how do we set this thing up? And, and eventually what ended up happening was we said, OK, time out. We need to start acting small and thinking small, like we're running this out of our garage. And we started moving everything back to Portland. We started consolidating everything. We bought out one of our partners. And we run it right here in Portland. And 
from that point on, we have done nothing but grown. Um, in the last uh, year and a half since we've done that, two years maybe, uh, we've more than tripled our, our revenue. Um, this year we're on track to, to double what we did last year again. Uh, there's some, been some great, great growth around it. And the things that we've learned as an entrepreneur, it, you need to kind of start to think about it as being really scrappy, being small, and all of those things kind of make sense, right? But then it's, it's building the complexities as you go, because you have a tendency to go, oh, well, this could be this, and it could be that. Uh, I think there's, from that standpoint, those are the things that we learned along the way. The other things that we learned along the way were, you know, figure out how you're gonna sell it before you make it. That makes a lot of sense, but sometimes people forget that. Uh, it's a basic. Um, and the other piece of the puzzle is, is be prepared that things go up and down and up and down and up and down. It's not a, it's not a smooth trajectory. Uh, the other things that we've learned, uh, we kind of figured out how to do some fundraising. Um, we just closed a, a small round of fundraising, uh, fundraising a, a bridge round that we've initiated. We were self-funded up to a point and then we've been self-sustaining and now we see the opportunities for growth and so we've started to uh, go into the fundraising world a little bit more and uh, that has been a whole nother sector of it and, and funding your business and making those plans for that becomes kind of almost full-time work as well. So anyway, that's a little insight into Looptworks. Uh, thanks for having us here. Thanks for uh, inviting us and uh, look forward to talking to you guys afterwards.